Hello everyone, and welcome back to another session of Dark Souls 2 PvP and another build showcase. This time guys, I am on the Sharpshooter. This build is definitely one of my uh, better bow builds, I'd have to say. It is probably the second most powerful. Possibly third, depends on where the uh, shot in the dark falls in there. But this is definitely one of the better ones, in my opinion. Now, this build, I really like this one a lot. I like it so much just because of the fact that there is a good variety in the spells that I can use. Now, <clears throat> that being said, uh, with Pyromancy, the spells, they're a lot more telegraphed than this, as far as, you know, if you're throwing a fireball or if you're doing something else. The animation is slightly different, and you can kind of tell. I don't necessarily like that. Most of the spells that you cast with uh, staff, though, they're not as telegraphed, so that makes it a bit more interesting, in my opinion, and a bit more viable, because people can't tell what you're going to be doing. Now, getting started with this build, the sharpshooter is level 150. It requires, or rather, it has 30 vigor, 25 endurance, 6 vitality, 20 attunement, 20 strength and 18 dexterity because originally I meant to use the dragon rider bow but that just didn't work out it actually was getting me killed but I'll address that a little bit later on <clears throat> excuse me my allergies are kind of bad today so just bear with me guys um, my adaptability is 20 my intelligence is 60 and my faith is 4 so uh, with this build, as I was saying, I chose to use a composite bow over the Dragon Rider bow, the reason being the uh, the draw speed and the stamina drain on that bow was just too much, and it was actually getting me killed. It was just putting me in too many bad situations, and I needed a faster draw speed, I needed less stamina consumption, and this was the best solution to that. So I went with it. Now. The composite bow, its attack rating for me on my build is 301. The uh, arrows, of co course, add the plus 50 physical and plus 160 magic damage. So the total attack rating, after everything is added in, because, of course, the uh, stat screen does not show the damage for bows with the uh, arrows added in to it. Why they don't have it that way, I'm not really sure, but they don't. So the total bow attack rating is 511 with 187 physical and 324 magical. So the damage on the witch tree branch, uh, everything is a magic infusion by the way. You'll notice I'm smacking people a lot with the witch tree branch. Its attack rating is 641, but of course it doesn't actually do 641. It usually does right around, you know, 120, 150-ish maybe. But, you know, it's, it's still kind of fun to smack people around with it, so I like doing it. And my Shatter Dagger. Um, just for the sake of punishing people, the Shatter Dagger has an attack rating of 236, which isn't really too terribly much, and it is enchanted with, uh, or not enchanted, but infused with magic, so even still it does less damage than an uninfused one, but it gets the job done. As far as my armor is concerned, I'm wearing the Grave Warden top, drawing like leggings and gauntlets. Um, no helmet because I actually have a tattoo right on my, like right on my forehead that looks like a third eye. I don't know. It's, it's just something I did on stream. That's when I made this build. I generally, when I'm making a new build, I do it on stream. So if that's something you're interested in seeing me doing, then definitely come stop by sometime. But more on the build. Um, I wear the third Dragon Ring, Chlorinthy Ring, Blue Clearstone, and the Southern Ritual Band. That's pretty much a standard for all of my bow builds. They just all benefit from the same rings. Why, you know, why bother switching that up, right? So, with this build, um, I would have to say that it's definitely uh, definitely one of the more powerful ones, definitely more powerful than the Hotshot, due to the fact that I'm able to do a few different things. First off, I have more ranged options, I have more ranged attacks, and I like that. That's a really good thing. I don't need to wait until the person's right on top of me to hit them, which, you know, with Pyromancy, that's kind of something you need to do in a lot of cases. Although, if I do need to do that, I still do have that option with Soul Spear. It's just as good close-up as it is far away. And I definitely, definitely have that option with Soul Spear Massage, I mean Barrage. Um, 
I definitely have that option because that's when it's meant to be cast. It's meant to be cast close up right in their face. Because if you do it that way, you're going to hit a relatively large amount of damage. I managed to get a hit of it right here, and well, eh, it's pretty decent damage, pretty decent. I can't complain about it. Plus, it looks really cool when you hit someone with it. So, that's one reason why I like using it. <clears throat> it has a bit of variety, and is a good close-up spell, which most people don't seem to realize. So, there's that. Now, as far as the other spells, I do use Soul Shower. Now, it did get a very nice tracking buff in the last patch. Uh, this is actually recorded on the uh, 25th of August, so not the patch that came out today, but the patch that came out before, and by saying this, I mean the commentary. The video was recorded over the weekend, so before the patch that just came out on the 25th. So, yeah, you guys get what I'm getting at. Some things might have changed in the most recent patch for the Crown of the Iron King DLC, but we'll see how that goes. So, uh, as far as other things about the build, just some general combos I like to I like to do. I do enjoy using Soul Shower. It's definitely a good com or good spell for setting up combos with other spells or my bow. People generally they tend to dodge around, which you know it makes sense. <clears throat> it makes a lot of sense. But when they're doing that, it sort of leaves them open to be being you know picked off with arrows, which is a good thing in my opinion. Another thing that I do like about this build that I cannot do on the Hot Shot shoot through walls or hit through walls. That's just not something I can do on the hot shot. There is no flame great sword. it's just not a thing. And I can't clip through walls with stuff like that. I can do it on the bow cleric with Wrath of the Gods, I can do it on this build with Soul Greatsword, I can do it on a shot in the dark with Dark Greatsword. Nothing quite like that for the hot shot though. But again, the Crown of the, Sun or Crown of the Iron King, DL Crown of the Old Iron King DLC. Gotta get it right. That comes out tomorrow, so who knows? Things might change. Um, yeah, overall, I just I like this build a lot. I had a lot of fun with it. It's one of the uh, one of the builds I enjoy the most, I'd have to say. And you know, if you want to try it, I definitely would recommend it. It's pretty good in a lot of situations. The only thing that, like all my bow builds, this one struggles with is dealing with healers. This is actually the last fight in the video, guys. This is the last fight in the video. We're at not even eight minutes in, and there are still two minutes left. Yeah, this guy heals a lot. And as hard as I tried to deal with him, well, you know, sometimes you just can't exactly do it. You just can't exactly do it. The person just wants their Estus that bad. And on a build like this, there's really not a good enough way to punish it. Maybe if I had Homing Crystal Soul Mass, I could combo that with something, and that would work but I didn't have that. I don't know. There are other spells I can use. I can use almost every spell in the game because of my 60 intelligence. If I spice down uh, whatever the last one is, I can't remember the name of, I could use all of them, but really in my opinion that one, that last one's just not worth it because I don't like having my health lowered. So, uh, excuse me one second while I drink some water. Alright, that's better. So, uh, where was I? Nah, I don't, I don't remember. Uh, anyway, this guy, uh, he was not necessarily the uh, nicest person, but he was a very good example for how this build has trouble dealing with healers. He was the best example I could have ever asked for. He actually even sent me a message after the fight bragging, bragging, how he still had five Estus, flask, Estus flasks left. Yeah. At least he makes a good example, though. At least he makes a very good example. And, you know, I, I can't complain about that aspect of it, because it's the easiest way to show this build really struggles at dealing with healers. And this guy loves his Estus. He loved his Estus so much. There was just nothing I could do about it. He wanted to win. He was that desperate for the win where he had to chug seven Estus. I mean, it is what it is. I'm not really, uh... I'm not gonna say anything bad about it, but... It is what it is. It's kind of silly, but that's the way it is sometimes. Anyway, um, this is the last fight in the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, found it helpful in one way or another. I'm going to have to do some updates for these videos after uh, the DLCs are all out, just to show their final forms, because this is not even their final form. 
and you know patches change things so anyway this was the last fight i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you guys next time